And now for the Monero development segment. Oh, yeah, here, uh, let's go, let's go. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to bombard you. No, I'm just getting my camera my mic set up. What's up? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 we hear you. What's up? How's so it going? Jump into the to the dev report here. Uh, body well, wasn't quite ready, so body needs a, a coffee. <laughs> okay, let me get my slides up. I was having some issues. Uh, yeah, should we get to go? How are y'all doing? Good, man. Good. We're doing all right. We, we got Tux in the in the driver's seat. Uh, we're with it's already issues. falling apart. It's already He's, falling apart. No, you're doing good, man. This is a good test. Trial by fire. You're dealing. You're dealing with the issues as they pop up. Oh, just just hop into it. Yeah, yeah. If you don't want, well, what's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm I'm doing really well. Um, I I feel like I'm getting a, into a groove with everything I'm working on. So, just trying to be consistent. That's the hard part. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Right, like sticking with it is the tough part, right? Yeah, showing up and doing the work every day. Well, yeah, I think I think it's it's working out, right? You're seeing some growth with with your projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What What are you most focused on right now? Um, I'm focused on launching uh, my new um, SMS like phone service, like uh, Phantom Phone. Probably work on it right now. Let me show you. Uh, so this, working on this right now. Hardware is tough, <laughs> as I'm sure you're aware of. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Show me that. What is it? What is this now? So basically, this I'm getting um, a little echo. By the way, I don't know if that's uh, yeah. My mic is not positioned correctly. Is that better? Yes, I believe so. Okay, is that okay? Yep. But yeah, basically, this is um, I, I want to operate a phone service that lets you pretty much rent out phones from me to receive text from. So this is the actual module that will receive the text. This will process it and then send it to a web server for you to look at. Oh, and but it's like a real phone number. Yeah, it's a real. It's a real. Wow. Wow. SIM card that you put in here, like, and it's hardware is. Good God. I feel like I've aged 10 years from doing this. <laughs> but yeah, basically you put a real SIM card in here and then it sends a text message and it's uploaded it to a server for you to look at. So that's the new thing I'm working on. Hardware is terrible, but sorry for the hardware lovers out there. I don't, I don't mean to offend you, but... No, is, is oh this like my God. A, a new, has anybody done this yet? This is this is interesting. Oh yeah, there was a service, I believe, somewhere in Europe, Krypton, Krypton phone that did it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, the report seeing that people liked it, then I don't know, like, what happened but the people like oh it's not working anymore my phone doesn't work anymore so i don't know what's the current status of it but it has been attempted in the past and now how how is this different than like like what are the other comparable solutions what are the what are well, the options people have that out there oh there's like um well one standard way is just just get your own burner phone which i can be expensive and like no one wants to maintain a phone all day maybe someone does but you want a little more convenient you would go with this option there's also some services that let you say you want to sign up for twitter right but with Twitter blue requires or Twitter check mark, whatever it's called these days, mm -hmm. requires a phone number just for verification. You can there are services that offer you that, but they don't rent you the whole phone. So it's not really good if you want to like actually have that same phone number to go check back into over the course of several days or several weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to like sign to Twitter blue, have a phone that you use just for that, or use it use it for all your services. If it's Google, Facebook, or Twitter, God, I hope you're not using Facebook. But any service that you're using that requires a phone number, you can have one just set up just for that. And the price point's gonna be I think, like ten to fifteen. I think we'll see. Maybe the way hardware goes, I might have to raise the price because I keep I keep messing things up. So it's um, only gonna be like budget. 10, 10 to fifteen bucks. Yeah, like um, like maybe like per month, or maybe oh, okay. I don't know. We'll see. Hardware okay. is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, man. Make sure, make sure you don't lose money on this operation. Dude, you're, you're amazing, man. So now you're, now you're messing around with hardware. You want for, like, we'll see you, brother. <laughs> amazing. But yeah, how's Monero Nodo going? Is it, is it? Uh, well, you know, I'm not a hardware guy by any means, or maybe I am, but I've never tried. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know. Ab Abdullah has been running with it. It seems to be going well. I mean, we, uh, we we're, we're supposedly still on track for having a prototype that will be at MoneroCon. So it's, it's going well. We got some orders. People have been ordering. I haven't really been pushing it super hard yet because I want to make sure everything is, you know, on target before I like really, you know, try to get people to 
get people to jump on it. But we do have we, we've had I think almost like ten orders so far. Oh wow, that's really um, good preso. Yeah, yeah. I want to get it up to like twenty five, and that will give me the confidence. Because as you know, there's a lot of risk involved, right? So <laughs> yeah. like hardware is expensive. Like you said, these no these things are particularly <laughs> expensive. Like there's very little little margin there. We're not like pricing these things. Uh, you know, I think we basically have to sell a hundred to reach start like to reach break even. I think. Oof. Wow. Yeah, you know, because we—I mean, the whole the whole concept here, the whole idea here is to make nodes very accessible, right? So they're not going to be accessible if we charge, you know, a thousand dollars for somebody to buy this piece of hardware. So we're trying to set the price as low as possible. We've had people reach out to us that want the hardware, that want to use it actually for a Bitcoin node. Some, I, I won't go into no names, but some very well-known <laughs> company that currently does nodes, uh, pl uh, for the Bitcoin community wants to use this hardware so we, abdullah must be onto something he picked he picked the right tech because people are interested in it so that, yeah that, no the beautiful the specs are amazing on it yeah so we might try to partner with them because then that would allow us to basically uh order more right mm -hmm. uh even if they go and use it for their own uh, ideally it would be awesome if we had some partnership where they kind of agreed to put a monero node on their device that they're selling you know mm. Or vice versa, maybe we add, you know, Monero, uh, Bitcoin node app to the Monero Nodo, right? So make it also easy to to run a Bitcoin node. But I don't know how that's going to work with the current like constraints of the hardware. So, um, but yeah, it's it's promising that they're interested in the actual hardware that he's managed to source and put together. So I think that means we're on the right track. Yeah, it's really beautiful. There's a lot of business going on. I saw that um, Vic from Cake Wallet hit five thousand sales on Cake web also. yeah 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 like, there's a lot there's a lot of motion being in, in profit and business being made here it's beautiful to see yeah and i saw somebody was tweeting out like i wonder if coin cards if monero will be the top use finally you know breach and be the top in the u.s and like coin cards kind of responded Ooh. with the wink like so I, it seems like we saw <laughs> some decent movement there um so yeah it's exciting guys where it's, yeah. working. it's working we're getting traction it Oh yeah, it's beautiful to see. Wait, how, what's Sunita? Did I miss where Sunita is? Uh, Sunita's taking Sunita's taking a break, so that's kind of oh yeah, after uh, Minerotopia. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's that kind of the deal. <laughs> the deal we made. She's, you know, she's trying to pull away. I'm trying to keep her in. Um, <laughs> I, I, I gotta let go. I gotta let her go. That she's makes sense. Relaxed. Yeah, like I was telling Tux, it's not so much. It's not the show it's more so dealing with me uh so <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's, she's a break she's a break <laughs> she's hanging out right now making some breakfast chilling with my daughter there it's uh, everything's good oh, that makes um sense. cool man but yeah let's uh let's go ahead and uh do the dev report what do you have what do you have for this week i have some um i guess some uh oh i may upload the wrong one sorry but this one's gonna be oh that was from last week yeah yeah, this is gonna be a little sad. Not as my usual. It's about five twenty-seven. Um, not the usual happiness that I usually bring to the table about new things being talked about. Um, this one's gonna be about a bug, unfortunately, because it's, it's been a rough couple of weeks since Monerotopia. We had the um ledger stuff mm. fiasco, and they're one of the biggest providers of Monero wallets, right? Hardware mm -hmm. wallets, at least. But that wasn't good news. And then we get a couple, um, I think like this week, we have a big, well, not a big, but a privacy issue. I'm uploading the slides right now. And it, it's just been a rough a rough couple couple weeks. But um, I'm going to be talking today about a Monero privacy bug issue. Is it uploading the slides? Come on. Oh, yeah. Can you um, put the slides up? Oh, yeah. Tux. Tux, you got the slides? Yep. There we go. Ah, that's the right one. Is that, is that the right one? Sweet. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sorry about my uh, mistake. Um, I know I'm not making your job any easier. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're all good, man. Um, basically, what I'm going to be talking about today, sad news. Don't be alarmed, but there was a three-year Monero privacy bug that existed in the code base for roughly three years. And it was patched, I believe, a month ago, maybe a couple weeks ago. And I'm just going to review that bug, what this means for the space as a whole, what this means for users in this space, if you use Monero for privacy, what this means for wallets in this space, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be a really quick overview. Don't be too alarmed. You know, it's not as bad 
as it might appear at first. So just bear with me for a moment. Um, this is just a summary. So this is where most of my um, resource came from about the actual write-up. It's Jeffro256. I've never actually heard of Jeffro256 before this post, but they're in Monero Cordell that actually gets funded, I believe, to work on Monero, which is really cool. So maybe you could do an interview with them, Doug. I don't think I've seen an interview with Jeffro256 yet. But, yeah, um, I, I don't think... But when I re read his name, the I, I almost thought that was JT Grassi, but uh, I think it's yeah, it's a different yeah, it's a new characters every day. Oh, but um, yeah, I've, seen, I've seen him seen him around though. But yeah, I've never I've never I don't know if he's willing to come on the show publicly. But yeah, it would be awesome. So yeah, um, Jeffrey did a great write up with assistance from the core team, of course. And the severity for this one was high, but like don't you know don't get too worried. It's not, I think they rate things to like not not to say like overrate things, but like they want to be. If, if you're gonna rate things, you you would rather over over say say that it's worse than it actually like might be for certain people. So you don't want to under you know you don't want to under rate things when it comes to severity. So don't be too alarmed. You know, just update your wallet. And you should be okay. And basically, it was an impact to the sender anonymity for funds that you sent, and when they were exactly ten blocks old. So it's not all the funds. It's it's the funds involved in this particular. Oh. Someone's saying 0.6% of transactions are affected, and the only thing that could be de-anonymized was a sender address. Interesting. I don't know who MB is, but um, that's interesting right up in the report. It's uh, Monero oh. Bull. Yeah, we'll have him on in a second. Oh, so he can... yeah, Monero Bull. So that act, that stat wasn't in the specific um, blog post, so I'm going to trust Monero Bull for that. So they say 0.6% of transactions are affected. So I imagine they're in the dev, like, channel chat getting updated information. So please keep correcting me, Monero Bull, if I say anything that's out of date. I made this last night based upon the report right here. But let's get a little more details into it. Um, basically, very high, high level um, um, overview of why this happened. If you're familiar, if you're new to Monero, Monero uses ring signatures to hide the privacy of some of the transactions information. And the way that it does that is it takes different transactions and it mi mixes the outputs together so it's really hard to tell which output you actually spit and right now um that output mixture it takes um for every one real output that you spin it takes 15 from the blockchain and this is actually revolutionary technology it's one of the actually one of the best non-interactive ways of mixing so you can think of it as a non-interactive bitcoin mixer if that's something that you're have familiar with but hopefully if you're here you know you know all the tech so I don't need to go over that too long. But basically, when you send a transaction Monero, it takes your transaction output and mixes it with 15 other transactions so that you can hide in the crowd and they can't tell which um, output you're actually spending. But the, but the issue with this one is there was an issue that where the software, not never, but rarely chose a 10 block old decoy. So basically, when Monero um, picks um, decoys, there's this whole algorithm that's based upon how it picks decoys, right? So it, it doesn't just randomly pull from the blockchain. There's a, a distribution that you have to actually follow to make them look real, right? Because if you were to pick one from all the existence, you, you wouldn't pick any new ones, essentially. So there's a specifically tuned algorithm that chooses um, decoys to make them look real. And there is right, a bug. The yeah. concern is uh, you, you want to show that most decoys are coming from uh, well, you don't want them to be just from recent transactions, right? Yeah, you, you want them to look real. Right. So that, um, people tend to spin um, more heavily rated towards new, but not right. always. So right. you have to. This is a super complicated algorithm that's been refined over years. Yeah, very. If you cool. want to read more about that, you can find some more information online. I can link something for Doug in the show notes. But basically, right, you don't want them. You don't want them to be random. They have to be specifically tuned to look real. So some old ones, some some medium ones, and some really new ones. But there was a bug where the algorithm ignored um, decoys that were exactly 10 blocks old, right? So that would mean that if you were spinning your wallet, like if you were in Monero Topo, for example, and you had your wallet and you were waiting exactly until you your funds unlocked so that you could spin, that means that um, decoys were never or rarely chosen that actually looks like there, there were actually 10 block decoys. So if a transaction had a, t a decoy that was ten exactly 10 blocks, not 9, not 11, but exactly 10 blocks old, you lost some privacy from that, essentially. 
Right. And it, it's, it's a... Hmm? Crazy, crazy. Like, uh, you know, you, you were yeah. saying, you know, kind of some bad. I don't see this as bad news, man. I know I'm the ultimate Monero uh, <laughs> maxi or whatever, but but I always see, I'm like, somebody caught this. Smart people are constantly yeah. looking at it, right? And now, and now we're now we're fixing it. Um, so yeah, it's a shame it's been an issue, but it looks like it's affected very small amount of yeah. Yeah. potential transactions, and uh, it's already been patched, as far as I know, on like Cake Wallet and Stack Wallet and stuff. So. They're all using the latest version of Monero, so I think it's not an issue now. Yeah, so don't, like I said, don't, this isn't, I know it has a high severity, but don't go, oh my God, it's over. Like, no, 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 no. It's a small <laughs> bug that affected a small percentage of people. So let's get into it. Um, you know, How bad was it? I didn't know that the 0.6 transactions percentage, but the severity rating was high. And then the, the, the actual report says devastating for sender anonymity with 10 block old true spins. So you know, that's what they put in the report. I think it's, I think they're at, they're going for the side of like you know being overly cautious versus being under cautious, right? So and also when we say yeah. when we you know for noobs out there when we say devastating, I mean it's yeah. revealing uh, the send. It's not revealing the amount. Mm -hmm. It's not revealing you know other uh, the recipient. The recipient, yeah, correct. Uh, it's just breaking the, the ring signature component of that one transaction where you may have been the unfortunate person who uh, selected a trend, uh, a, a decoy from 10 blocks ago, right? Yeah, but the really not cool a thing, where your yeah. true spend was from 10, 10 blocks. Old. Exactly 10, not nine, not 11, right. nine, and, but it had to be exactly 10. So right. and how, how often was that? Do we know how often that was happening? Like, I think there was, there is reports recent, um, pretty recent, but there was a graph that show like um, when they patched it, what the distribution looked like versus what it looked like before. And it didn't seem like it was too impact. It wasn't like a major, major deal, but there's not exact data yet that I saw. Maybe someone else in the crowd or in the talk might be, you know, a little, have their ear closer to the ground than me. Uh -huh. But the good news is, is that this bug was specifically in the Monero, like official GUI wallet. But as you know, there are other wallets. So apparently based on the port, some wallets were not affected by this issue. Maybe someone run, is running custom software. Someone's doing something, you know, just custom that's not in the Monero. It might be Feather Wallet. It might be Cake Wallet. I'm not too sure about where this wallet that was um, not affected. But them not being affected means that um, there's you still have Monero's privacy when it comes to deniability, right? Because but these wallets were actually creating decoys that were 10 block old true spins. So you can't look at the blockchain and say, oh, that's a 10 block old true spin because some wallets were actually using that as decoys. Mm -hmm. Right. So diversity in this in this aspect actually helps save a lot of the privacy aspects of it. Right. So not all. So it's not not too bad. You know, take it with a grain of salt is getting passion. And the numbers I'm seeing 0.6 percent transaction percentage. Not bad at all. Uh, and now and now to to be clear once again and now it it, it is fixed and all the mm -hmm. yep it is fixed their wallet providers have updated their their code and are you and mm -hmm. like man i have these conversations because it's like people are gonna like take it on twitter <laughs> i'm gonna see some zcash people tweeting about it. i'm like that's just <laughs> no that's it's definitely just, that's uh... yeah that's reality and we talk you know like i said this yeah. this is that the healthy uh sign of a healthy open source project right everybody yeah talks about it out in the open and fixing it yeah, but so talking about the what the real ramifications are. Not yeah, no, I really respect the devs too because they're very open. And from my perspective, they actually are overly not the words not cautious, but they like they they don't minimize issues, right? They're known if anything for going the opposite direction. I really respect that from the devs for being honest, right? Because it's like something goes wrong, everyone wants to point fingers, but there's a lot of people being like, "Oh, this happened for this. This is how bad it is," and it's really really cool to see. I really respect the devs in this, and I think they handled the situation well, also. And how could this be fixed? Um, just in the short short term, you could um, upgrade your software, of course. That's what you should you should do, right? But now there's the the um, patches out there. Some people are running patch nodes. They, um, even if you don't run, upgrade your software, which you should do, you should upgrade your software. The impact will definitely be reduced, also, because someone out there is running updated software, right? So it gives you a crowd you can hide in. So not a major major issue, in my personal opinion. Long term, right? Like um, Monero has had so much work on the getting bigger and better decoy selection algorithms, bigger ring sizes on, in, a, in context of Seraphis and those other projects. 
it's so much work being done. I also have a question about that, Doug. Do you know when the video? Because Monero Topia was awesome. I know y'all doing a lot of video. Do you know when the videos would be out so I can start referencing them and things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna start releasing them kind of one at a time. I think we should have the first ah. one drop any day now. Um, because we'll put them out in order of of the conference. Maybe like one, you know, one every two days or something. Oh, that's gonna be so great. I know, my favorite. I don't show bias, but Rucknum's report and. Um, presentation about like where Monero is going, where it sits at. I I thought it was, I'm so yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait either because I missed pretty much all the talks because I was running around like a maniac. You know, yep, I don't go in and like see part. Oh, you so, oh, they're so good because yeah. I um was incapacitated for a day. So <laughs> <laughs> there, you guys have so much good stuff coming. But like I said, um, there's so much work being done in making the decoy selection algorithm bigger, ring sizes better. Bigger and better, essentially, in the long term. The issues like this won't have much of an effect also. But, like, super long term, I think you can maybe, we can start looking at moving, like, super, super long term, moving away from Monero ring signatures because they do cause a, the, the, a lot of headaches for the devs. You know, there are other technologies out there, but you have to be slow and methodical about how you go about that process. And there's many different things going on. I know Faro has some cool stuff that they talked about at uh, MoneroCon, or Monerotopia, sorry. There's a bunch of long-term solutions out there, but they have to be slow and methodical about implementing them. But they will hopefully help reduce issues like this also. And then, speaking of Doug, I mean, anyone, like, Doug has so much content out there. It is actually mind-blowing because you actually have an episode with, Justin, I believe, yeah. Justin. And they actually, because Justin was one of the people who first discovered some the major issues in the Monero decoy mm -hmm. selection algorithm. And mm -hmm. they, I think, was this, this was like... um was it 2019, Doug? I'm not sure the year. You did you uh, when he did, yeah, I think it's 2020. I don't know. 2020. Uh, but yeah. yeah, so it's basically, if you watch this video, it basically covers issues like this and, and will prepare you a lot to, if you wonder what's going on. It's really accessible. One of my favorite episodes that Doug's done on Monero Talk. It's a great episode. So I recommend you um, Google this one if you want to dive into something that's a little more accessible. And the issues about Monero decoy decoy selection algorithm, things like that, essentially. I think that's a I think that's all that I have today. And like I said, if you want to keep up super up to date, the devs have weekly meetings where they talk about all this stuff, like mostly every week. I think they might miss a week every now and then, but like you, you can literally get straight into the devs and see what they're talking about. Like Doug said, this is how open pro protocols work. You know, no one's hiding anything, they're chatting in the in the open, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's pretty much it. Like I said, don't like the, everything's fine. Please don't <laughs> be too alarmed. I hate having these conversations. I want to be honest though and straightforward. Any other any questions? No, man, that's fantastic. I'm glad uh, you chose this topic this week. Yeah, I, I you know, from my great intelligence, have an intro to ground, doing some deep research. <laughs> <laughs> Doug asked me to cover it, so that's what <laughs> because because I also wanted to cover the the ledger stuff. I was like, man, like. Yeah, no, there's there's a lot, there's always a lot happening, right? But uh, all there's so stuff much stuff happening. I I love that we added this dev report thing. You're doing an amazing job. Greatly appreciate. Oh, thank it. you. Super nuanced, super hard to try to condense like super nuanced topics down to something that like you know a, a three minute PowerPoint with like four slides. <laughs> well, yeah, hey, it's impressive though. Oh yeah, thank, I'm glad you guys enjoy it. All right, buddy. Yeah, I think uh, I think that covers it for now uh mm -hmm. hopefully uh no more bad news next week <laughs> no i'm looking for some good news i'm gonna talk about the monero nose cake some 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 good news you know <laughs> all right brother uh let's uh let's keep it moving